My name is John Arena. I'm one of the co-founders of Metro Pizza in Las Vegas. We try to create newsworthy events uh, regularly every two or three months. It's a, it's a craft beer and pizza event that gives us an opportunity to showcase some things that we don't normally make and also um, pair those with, with some craft beers that we think will be complimentary. It gives us a chance to experiment and get feedback from some of our a select group of customers that we know are a little bit more um, adventurous. It's really important for us on a lot of levels to stay relevant and stay current and uh, not only with our customers but also with food journalists. So we have several food journalists coming in for this event. Um, we want, after being in business for 34 years, you don't, want your, you don't want the local press to start thinking that you're not doing anything creative anymore or that you're, you're getting stale or you're getting tired. You know, the, um, it's really important in your business to stay relevant and to remain part of the conversation. And the only way you can do that is if you're constantly experimenting and constantly offering new things. Food journalists don't want to write, you know, Metro Pizza is still here for 34 years doing the same old thing. That's not really a story. And it also gives us feedback on what works and what doesn't work. I'll have the smaller piece, yeah. <laughs> like really small? Yeah, okay. Six beers, six different pizzas, a couple of appetizers and dessert. But there's, uh, the common theme is that all of the, all the items are either specifically created to pair with some of the beers from this microbrewery or they actually are using the beers in the, in the recipe. For this event in particular, we, we looked at the ingredients that are being used um, and really tried to think about our beers and what's going to complement that. So, uh, for example, we have some beers that have a smoky characteristic. We had some pizzas that were not only wood-fired, which is going to be a little smoky, but they involve um, like pine nuts and, and other ingredients that complement that. And so I, it, for me, I either look for complementary flavors or drastically different flavors. So if you have a really spicy pizza, it might be nice to have a light, crisp, refreshing beer to kind of cut through that heat. But if you have a, a really intense flavored pizza, you want a beer that can stand up to that. And, you know, lucky for me, we have a portfolio of beers that we can kind of cover pretty much any flavor profile. Um, opportunity from our, from our relationship with our beer distributor who brought the beers in and said, would you be interested in doing a tasting? And then we kind of just took off with it and said, hey, if we're gonna do a tasting of products from Utah, let's really jump on this and create some new pizzas. And we also, um, we have a, a friend who has a mobile pizza kitchen with a wood-fired oven, and we wanted to have an opportunity to do some wood-fired pizzas, which we don't normally do in, in our pizzeria. When I first moved to Las Vegas, First thing I did was, you know, I gotta find some good pizza. So I stumbled upon Metro Pizza and we're like, wow, this place is awesome. And uh, we noticed from his little flyers that he has, you know, his monthly flyers that he uh, has a pizza class. And so my wife and I were like, well, let's go to the pizza class, that'll be fun. So we went and uh, we made pizza and John was kind of like, oh, wow, you kind of know what you're doing. So I don't know, I just, I took one step and put one foot in front of the other and didn't stop. Tim did kind of get his start by taking our pizza class, but he's doing his own thing. His pizza is his pizza. In the old days, there was a very closed-minded attitude of, not necessarily animosity, but uh, this is my recipe and I'm closing off. I don't want to share it with anybody. And working with PMQ, uh, you, you've kind of seen it the other way around. If there's any animosity, it's the independents trying to gang up on the chains. So the, the benefit of collaborating with your local independents in your area is they might do something really well that they'd be happy to let you know how to do if you're not encroaching on each other's territory. But it's just an exchange of ideas. And when you work together, you, come, you create something that neither of you had on your own. Breweries, especially microbreweries, are always trying to capture awareness and capture customers and capture in the retail market its shelf space, tap space in, the, in a tavern or if you have, if you have draft beers. So they're really anxious to partner with people who bother to make that call and say, let's do a great event. Let's create something special here. What can we do together? I find my experience with other brewers and other breweries is we're a really casual crowd. Um, if you're offering pizza, you'll get a brewer there. I can almost guarantee that. <laughs> Everything that we do comes down to planning, uh, making lists, making timetables and schedules, and. Uh, you know, if you try to do this, something like this in your head, there are so many components of it, it'll become like a big giant misplaced jigsaw puzzle. 
You know, you, you, what you really have to do is decide what you want to be, what you're trying to say, communicate to your customers and uh, to the journalists that are involved, and then you got to stay on point. Everybody wants to work with people who make their lives easy for them. You know, if you're if you're a journalist, if you're a if you're a microbrewery or a distributor, you want to go to the people that you know you can depend on that are going to show up on time, do their job, follow through, provide eyeballs, all the things that you're looking for to promote your brand. So you've got to make sure that you know you're the guy that that does all those things and follows up. Coordination between uh, the chef and the brewer, I think, is, is essential. Um, you know, if we can talk and, and discuss what foods are going to be served and what beers might work good with those, I mean, really, right up until maybe two days ago, we were kind of tweaking the menu tonight, which is, you know, it's fun. It's it's fun to look at what's going to be served and then consider what beers we have available and try to make that marriage happen. Especially in a town like Las Vegas, where the dining scene is so dynamic, it really becomes critical that you're creating new products and that you're always known as an innovator. So for us, the unique story is 34 years and we're not tired, we're fresh. We're always thinking about building legacy, not creating currency, you know. Um, the legacy will, if you build legacy, the currency will come to you.